Hello there, I'm Leo Waldock, this is Kit Guru TV, and this is my take on uh, AMD Catalyst Omega. Now, Omega sounds quite biblical, it sounds like it's the end of something, and in actual fact it's the end of 2014, and as far as I can see, it's not much more than that. Now, Omega is a big driver release for AMD, but it's a combination of a number of bits and pieces. So I'm gonna go quickly through a list of the things that jump out at me. However, and I'm pointing down here, um, because around this uh, web page, back on Kit Guru, if you're looking on YouTube, there's gonna be a whole stack of uh, frames and pictures out of the press deck showing you uh, lots of good stuff. So let's go from the top. Features in Catalyst Omega. Virtual super resolution. Now I like this idea. The idea here is you've got a display that is say full HD uh, But your graphics card can do more than full HD in whatever game you're choosing to play and ordinarily therefore of course your resolution is limited by the display lowest common denominator and What virtual super resolution does is it uh, looks at the options that you have within the game and you then click the button and you can render the game at a higher resolution, 2560 by whatever or 4K, if you have that option within the game. And then the graphics will output that to your display. So what you're really saying is you've got more graphics hardware than display, uh, and it says, fair enough, we'll give you a bonus. Obviously, the ideal thing is that you actually get a display that is up to the capability of the graphics hardware. But if you haven't done that, this is a way around that. Next, we have uh, video playback, and I'm in, I'm in a mixed, uh, mixed mind here. Uh, for example, AMD Fluid Motion Video for Blu-ray. The idea is it smooths out the frame rate and the playback. Uh, we've seen all sorts of movie playback hardware over the years, with uh, Blu-ray in particular being off, off, uh, handed off to the graphics hardware. That's a good thing. Uh, it takes a massive load off when you've got a dedicated movie engine in your graphics chip. It takes a massive load off the CPU. It's a good, good move. However, Upscaling DVD to Blu-ray quality and then upscaling Blu-ray now to 4K quality is all well and good provided you watch Blu-rays. And the fact of the matter is I don't. Uh, I have a PS3, it's capable of playing Blu-rays, I have some Blu-rays and basically the only DVDs I play these days are old Simpsons DVDs. So if you're into movie playback, if you've got um, a media centre PC, this, this is one for you. Personally, I'm not that fast. 5K panel support, this is a sort of similar thing. Um, and AMD specifically mentioned the Dell UP2715K, which is 5120 by 2880, so it's 4K with a bit on the sides. Now that's all very nice, and it requires two DisplayPort 1.2 ports to drive that colossal screen, but you're not on 4K, I shouldn't think. Um, if you are on 4K, I doubt you're buying a 5K display anytime soon. So it's all well and good them uh, AMD being ready for the future, but yeah, I'm... Um, We'll worry about that in a year or two. Uh, frame pacing. This could be big. And the fact is, I'm not sure. Now, the headline is that frame pacing smooths out the peaks and troughs of frame rates in games. Well, the thing is, smoothing out the troughs, troughs are down to hardware limitations or poorly written games or something. You know, obviously, when you're loading a map or something, you go around a corner or you go out of a door and there's a whole world and the thing goes... <laughs> There's nothing they can do about that. that that's down to the game. Um, if your hardware isn't up to some uh, particular uh, aspect of a game, then you're going to get a, a, a dip in frame rate unless you change the uh, image quality. And as far as I'm aware, this is not uh, a sort of temporary on-the-fly reduction of image quality. Instead, and we went back to um, AMD to specifically say, how does this work to make things smooth? Obviously, you can't raise the minimum frame rate as that's tied into the performance of the hardware. So does it just reduce the maximum frame rate? And <laughs> here are the words. The frame pacing improvements in Catalyst Omega are trying to pace what the application sees by inserting delays at the very top of the driver stack to make sure the frames make progress at a somewhat constant rate on the CPU. Got to be honest, I don't quite follow that. Now, they do refer here to one of the slides from the press deck, which is going to be on, uh, on the KitGuru website. Uh, and it says the main way to validate this uh, technology is by the standard deviation between the timing of the frames, i.e. instead of going da, 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 you get da, 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 da. Uh, so the table shows how much the standard deviation has decreased on select games in Catalyst Omega. Now this particular graph, and I'll be interested to hear what the readers make of this, it shows sort of two curves that do this, and then the Omega thing that kind of is in the middle and smooths the two out, um, splitting the difference. 
remains to be seen exactly what that graph is actually showing us and what the impact is in the real world. So frame pacing, it sounds big, and honestly, at this moment, I'm not quite sure, which I know is a bit wishy-washy, but that's the truth. Uh, what else have we got? Yes, uh, gaming on APU. Now, to me, this is big. Kaveri is capable. It can play games. However, the frame rates, depending on your settings, can be extremely limited, depending on the game and all the rest of it. 20-something frames per second, 25, 30, maybe low 30s. Older games, no problem at all. Clearly, anything that AMD can do to boost frame rates on APUs, the odd frame or two makes a big difference. So the more they can do here, the better. Because Kaveri, as um, you may have seen on recent reviews uh, on various motherboards we've done, Kaveri is absolutely getting there. Uh, it's usable. The question is how usable and precisely which games and which settings. So this, big fan. On the other hand, frame rate increases for games with discrete GPUs. We always see this. Uh, AMD graphics technology is quite mature. So the idea they're uh, able to work with the games developers and sort out the drivers a bit better. No surprise, they do it every time. And we've got more of this certain specific mentioned games. And again, there'll be a uh, slide that shows which games. You get uh, significant percentage increases. We're used to this, but it, it's welcome. Uh, display syncing. Uh, um, my, my, my heart sinks here a little bit. Uh, this, in the case of AMD, is FreeSync, obviously NVIDIA backs G-Sync. Now this is good technology, um, but it ties you to specific display technology and that's a pain in the neck. So uh, AMD is saying that there's a new Samsung display, I think actually a, a handful of displays coming out that uh, support FreeSync, but the idea you're going to put a particular graphics card and a particular display together, it, we shouldn't have to do this. The idea is that PCI Express is PCI Express, graphics cards go in there, DVI, HDMI, display port are what they are, you plug into your display, your television, whatever, and there you go. The idea you have to start allying technologies, please, no, don't do this to us. Um, a while back we saw with iFinity, uh, we were promised some very thin bezel Samsung displays. So if you had that two display type iFinity with the bezels right in front of you, and the drivers could kind of ignore the gap, um, then those particular really thin bezel Samsungs uh, were going to be the business. And I'm not sure I ever actually saw those in the flesh. I saw pictures. I think I may have seen the sample. But yeah, it was promised it never happened. Or for me anyway. So not sure about this. Really uh, some sort of unified syncing technology would gladden my heart. And that brings us to the big green elephant in the room, which is NVIDIA Maxwell. To the best of my recollection, in the 60 frames in the press presentation and the other bits and pieces, and sitting with Terry and Sasha for 45 minutes in a one-to-one, -one, I don't think I heard NVIDIA mentioned once, or if it was mentioned, I mentioned it and it was ignored. And here's the thing. NVIDIA Maxwell is brilliant. Uh, Zardon's reviewed a whole stack of graphics cards, they're really good, they take so little power, they perform well, they do almost everything you could possibly want from a graphics card, and I'm only saying almost because I just want to leave some room for doubt, they're just superb and they're cheap. Uh, by contrast, the AMD hardware is old, clunky, hot, takes too much power and a bit slower. Um, so, the, you know, price cuts all to the good, but quite clearly what AMD wants is next generation hardware. Now, Anton's been leaking performance uh, figures about upcoming hardware, when it's coming, who knows, sometime next year, clearly, but hopefully sooner rather than later. Uh, relationships with games developers will obviously help performance on AMD hardware, but that's a very long term process. So. Games, they're coming through the pipeline, that's good. AMD hardware is coming at some point. I, I don't. I suspect it's no time very soon. Um, in the meanwhile, we are, we've got Catalyst Omega and other driver improvements, and that means that Terry McAdon is the most important man at AMD, uh, because that's something they can work on right now. They can chuck resources at their drivers, and they can yield performance for uh, mature hardware. Uh, so that means that Terry McAdon of AMD deserves a pay rise. We at KitGuru, we support you, Terry. Um, but in the meanwhile, to my mind, this means that Catalyst Omega, while it's significant, is not earth-shaking. There's a bunch of different things in it, and you're unlikely to use all of them, but certainly you're going to find a feature in there that does uh, give you some benefit. Obviously, it's all free of charge. So this is a good thing, but for the moment, what we really want uh, is next gen AMD hardware. But in the meanwhile, what we have is AMD Catalyst Omega. This is Leo Waldock for Kit Guru TV.